and we are live hello again everyone it's been a while i've been on break for the last one one hour it feels like i've been really far uh i'm with david hi david how are you doing hi leo i'm good thank you for having me on um so david you do have the pad open in front of you and that's right yes I think Sasha is putting up the pad for us so that they don't have to look at my very tiny face on BBB. I'm very small. I'm trying to push the boundaries. Um, David, if you want to take some questions, I... Sorry, I've got elves whispering in my ears at the same time. Uh, give me just a second. Uh, David, can you maybe read the first question and uh, try to answer them? Sure. Question one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you use this just for yourself, or do you use this to discuss or show with doctors or health professionals? Uh, the answer is um, it is useful for me, and it's useful for healthcare providers. Um, so it's not I'm not just able to see connections myself. Even if we're not seeing a connection, if I'm talking to someone, if I'm talking to a clinician, um, I have brought this in on a tablet. If it's an in-person thing, or on the phone, if it's if it's a you know a video appointment with someone, just send it in an email. It's very convenient to just send the graph around as a screenshot. So um, it's it's definitely been really useful uh, to because you know one thing that I touch on in the talk is that let's say that we're talking about depression, for example. Let's say, oh well, how have you been sleeping right. this week? Well, if you had objective information, that's perfect. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, uh, I was <laughs> mispressing my button for production. You 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 good? Oh, it just caught a little clip of sound, I see. Okay. Yes, sorry. Um, yes, so where was I? I was saying, okay, so on the one hand, having objective information is good not only for you, but when it's time to speak to someone and give them a picture of what's going on, you don't have to generalize. Even if you're having a good day, generalizing can be really like, oh, well, how are you sleeping? Oh, well, this day I woke up that, but which way was that Wednesday or Thursday? And then I remember this friend came over, so it must've been Friday. That's not, I've discovered that actually just first thing in the morning, waking up, recording how many pieces of gum did I have yesterday? How much did I sleep? So I Okay, so someone else, quest, this segues right into the next question. How do you input the health data? Semi-automated with org mode capture templates, copy paste, automated with a smartwatch, and if this, then that, tasker, org mode document to automatically add stuff like sleeping data. Which parts are and are not automated? Okay, so it turns out I'm using an org mode capture template to automate the insertion of all the little category tags in the property drawer, but not the values. I'm not using a smartwatch or anything whatsoever. I am just, um, I, I look at the clock when I go to bed and I look at the bed when I wake, look at the clock when I wake up. And the very first thing I do is turn on my computer and turn on Emacs and enter that data. So um, it, now it would be really cool if we could get some kind of data, you know, because if it's all, you know, if it's able to be massaged into org mode format, it can then go into org GNU plot. Or maybe you could cut org mode out of the equation if you find a way to go directly from that data to either CSV, which org mode, uh, I'm sorry, which GNU plot can read. Or you know whether whether you have to wear a little script in between. <clears throat> um, and the next question: How do you track the various health statistics that you're gathering? Um, the so, the ones you know, I, for example, nicotine. It's an estimate. I'm pretty sure it was six. It was pretty sure it was seven. You know what I mean? Um, it's pretty close um, because I do count, and I, I think I could at most be off by one or two. So it's not fatal to the enterprise of collecting data. The same thing with sleep. I look at the clock, but I, I, I only count half hours. I say, oh, I slept seven hours, you know, seven and a half. Um, it's very much a back of the napkin thing, but it's precise enough overall that as you can see from the data in the talk, you can see that my sleep declined pretty steadily over the course of that. So the, even if some of the values are off a little bit, you're still seeing trends and you can still see connections. So it's not perfect. I would love to have some type of more automated data, but all right. So I'm going to move on to the next question. It's possible to download data from Apple's wa Apple Watch's health app. Is it easy enough to incorporate those .cs file, .cs files, .csv files into your implementation of Canoe Plot? Okay. 
So I think what it would involve, if you wanted to use my template generator, it would involve making your template, but then um, modifying the GNU plot script to read from that file instead of from an org mode table. So I think I think that what you would want to do is select the very, yeah, I mean, and if, if, if you want, you know, I'll be around in the IRC after, and uh, I might even be able to look at their documentation or something, peek, just even just give a peek at it to give a be better answer to this question. Sure. And just to remind, uh, remind everyone, so sorry, let me try to put up. Okay, uh, I did crush Dev earlier when trying to switch window. Oh, okay, I managed to do it. Yes, I still have it in me. Uh, so let me make the uh, slide longer. Uh, slightly later, we will also be opening the discussion. So this BBB instance in which we are currently, we will be opening it so that people can come in with questions and uh, maybe you know, considering the personal nature of this talk, you know, maybe try to be a little wary of sharing personal information, especially if the stream is live. But otherwise, you can have a chat with uh, David, uh, provided David you're still available in, uh, you know, 10, 20 minutes. And feel free to come yeah. in and ask questions because really that's what EmacsConf is about. It's about getting in touch with the speakers. And this is the opportunity that you have to have a one-on-one -on -one with them rather than an asynchronous one with a pad. Uh, sorry for the interruption. I just felt I remember. We're probably going to open the chat in about five to 10 minutes. We still have a lot of questions. And right now I'd prefer if David focused on those questions. So please go in, David. Thank you so much, Leo. Uh, and yes, I am available for after, so I'll stick around. Um, okay, so regarding the medication tracking, you only have the option to record missed or not. If one needs to take multiple medications throughout the day, how would you propose to track that within GNU plot or separate? Okay, yeah, as it is, I, I don't record which medication and it, because it's it, the one I miss is typically just the same one. So um, the deal is, is that you would probably want to, uh, you, you could count it as either doses or milligrams. The problem with tracking is milligrams. And yes, you you would want to use separate uh, separate variables for those. And probably what would make sense is uh, either to record some lines as doses, meaning that you know one whatever that ends up being, if it's a tablet or if it's the proper dose. And then that way, um, if if one medication is late and another is not or whatever you need to record, they're on separate lines, separate columns of the CSV um, file, or I'm sorry, not CSV file, of your org mode, separate separate uh, property drawer entries in your, in your capture template. Um, I'm trying to think, you could, you, it would be a little bit more work, but you could track that. The problem with tracking milligrams is that some medications, are, you, you would have a large range on the chart because some medications are a few milligrams and some medications are lots and lots for the, you know, for a dose. So um, it, you tracking it as single doses might make sense. Um, all right. So how's the workflow? This is the next question here. How's the workflow when working on the GNU plot code? Can you control C, control C and the SVG, SVG output on the right is updated automatically? The answer is yes. You can use something called auto revert tail mode. That's all, you know, so you hit meta X to get the command and then auto revert tail mode. And that will cause the SVG file to automatically update every time you hit control C, control C on the GNU plot file, provided that you're viewing the same file that the GNU plot is going to overwrite. Um, let's see. Question How much time does it take to process the amount of data that you add inside GNU Emacs? So at this point, I have three or four months of data, and it takes to update the whole thing, like, you know, get, capture all the ten, uh, entries. It takes like a second or two. And this is a pretty decent PC. So we're not talking about something that takes a long time each day I update it. It's just, mm, it's done pretty quick. All right, next question. Will indent guide behave well with YAML files for Helm? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Indent Guide is really nice, and it seems to behave pretty reasonably. But um, I wouldn't be able to speak to that. OK, uh, another David, question. Something, just a quick interruption. So we have opened the chat now for people to join us on BBB. So you can go to the talk page on EmacsConf. You go to David's talk, which is called Health. 
and you should be able to join the BBB. So if you have questions that you'd like to ask with your voice uh, to David, feel free to join us. And David, in the meantime, you can reply to the last question you have. OK, thank you. Great. Um, the last question is, have you noticed your behavior changing as a result of tracking your data? And the answer is yes. The accountability has given, it draws habits, good or bad habits. Uh, it, it illustrates them in sharp relief. All of a sudden it's, it's very clear, like what's going on, what's not going on. Um, and it, um, it eliminates a sense of fog because it's hard to generalize when your awareness is changing over time. It's hard to generalize about what's going on each day and having the objective information. Yes, I'd say it has changed my behavior in a good way. I mean, that's a very good thing, I suppose, you know, the, the whole point of, you know, tracking so much stuff, you know, usually people, it's an interesting angle that you have because you're creating data on a lot of health aspects and people usually when they talk about using Emacs to better their life, they talk about all, they talk about getting things done, they talk about all the usual uh, suspects when you come to task organization, but plotting over time is something that is technically possible and that people talk about, but I feel like you've gone way far into this particular topic. So well done you. And it feels as a result you have a particular insight into seeing the curves evolve basically over time. And it's uh, I think it provides very interesting data, something that is more easily understandable than just a list of to-dos in an agenda over time. Yeah. And what's, what's nice is that I still can have to-dos and notes in that same file that produces uh, my, my chart and that has all the data in it. And I keep that in version control, which stays in a private repo. And what's nice about that is everything's backed up. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm going to have a sip of water here. Please do. I mean, <laughs> you, I've, I'm actually down two termite. It's the good plural for termus. And I'm down two since we started uh, Emaxcom today. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So um and uh so i lost my train of thought take your time to find it we're fine we still have about eight minutes of q a by the way uh, i'll remind people we have opened the bbb room so if you want to join us and ask live questions to david feel free to do so now have i'm not seeing... the back? i'm sorry could you repeat that i was asking you if you'd uh if you'd found the train of thought again. Um, hold on, hold on. The last question, have I noticed behavior changing? Yeah, the, the, it's, it's, we were, then we talked about, oh, I talked about the fact that you can have to-dos and notes and appointments and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, for example, one of my next, well, oh, now I remember the point that I was going to get into. The point is that once I have this routine of getting up every single morning and first thing putting in my information, that habit I feel like I build on. For example, I added a new variable the other day. You know, I can add, I thought of something. I'm like, hey, I should track that in my data. It reminds me, I say, hey, there's not enough green triangles. I need to get some exercise. This week, you know, the weather, the I haven't wanted to get outside because the weather's been so dismal. So um, it's absolutely been a game it really has been yeah and it, it doesn't have to be oh go ahead go ahead leo no 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 uh i i was going to say that it's it's really good to hear that uh, software can have such a potent impact just the ability to track your data over time because the thing is i think whatever you're feeling you know whenever you have mental ailments or whatnot it's really hard to to have a healthy relationship to the chronology of feeling better. And it's easy to get lost into the immediate sensation. But I feel like being able to track over time that, you know, this daily checking in that you do in the morning of keeping track of your health data, I think it's the first step that shows you over time that, oh yes, I am actually feeling better. And so as a result, uh, being able to visually see, oh yes, I'm a I am actually doing better. It's a, it must be reassuring, I assume. It is. I think that's a really interesting turn of phrase you had there earlier when you said um, it's, it's harder to have a healthy relationship to the chronology of getting better. Uh, I think those were your exact words there. You know, the, 
the idea that, um, you know, it, 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 if you've got to manage something, if you've got to roll with the punches, then seeing seeing what you've accomplished, seeing yourself bounce back, you know, and, and then being able to see a trend, you might not notice unless you're tracking per per the clock that sleep has started to decline and that it's time to start keeping your eye out. So it's also a real, it's a, re, yeah, yeah. And it is reassuring. And you're right about that. You know, it's not always easy to be in the mindset of saying, hey, these lines move and it's, you know, they'll move again. Yeah. And I, I feel also, it's kind of like I having a scientific take on your well-being because you are parameter. Okay, really tough word to say for the Frenchman that I am, but parameterizing uh, the uh, elements of your life, such as sleep. And we already have, sleep is already more or less of a parameter in our lives. You know, we know, oh, you should, you should sleep at least eight hours. You should have one hour 30 blocks of sleep all the time. So this is a well parameterized element of our lives. But other element that you're doing or the conflation of different curves feels like it's a, uh, pointing out is providing more data and being able to see the trend which is a key word in the presentation in what you do i think that's really good chronology and trends and being able to see what works i, I just have this example crossing my mind some people are plagued with canker sores which are really nasty stuff that you get in mouth but more often than not it's really hard to track why you're getting them a lot of people say it's due to stress or to poor sleep or to deficiency in iron or whatnot or your toothpaste you might have uh, understood that I actually suffer from them. So I actually know a lot of the reasons. But being able to track health data like this feels like it would be able to correlate the appearance of canker sores with maybe poor sleep or maybe change in medication or maybe stress at work or stuff like this. I really like this stance and I think you're really onto something here. Yeah. And, I, you know, if people wanted to chat about that more in terms of like putting putting people's heads together because like let's say someone who need, has a more sophisticated medication tracking need, maybe they come up with a solution and they share their, their config. There's one thing I didn't talk about in the talk, which is I have a, uh, a computed, I had one line where I have a formula instead that because GNU plot, you know, can plot all kinds of formulas. So I have it plot an overall trouble score, which I did not show in the video, but I had it assign I had it assigned three points for every hour above or below the goal of eight hours. So too much would give me but lots of points in the trouble and too little would give me lots of points. And so the relation to the goal or whatever, if stress is high, then I, then the overall, if the anxiety line is high, then the overall trouble line should get high. And what I found is that that trouble line really did track with my recollection of how the last few weeks had had gone. And so that trouble line is, you can see when it's trending, even if it's not, um, even if it's not super obvious from the other lines. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll share that too. All right, David, we are about at the end of time for the, for the Q&A. Thank you so much for answering all the questions. I think it was very valuable to not only have your long presentation, which was very detailed, but also have this Q&A where you got the chance to answer uh, one, two, three, four, five, more than seven questions, which is great in the time that we have. That's fantastic. And thank you so much for joining in and for and for being here. And um, thank you for having me at the conference. It's really amazing to be part of the community. And, and uh, I'm happy to stick around. Um, do you want me to drop to IRC or just keep answering questions in voice? Should I, I, I don't think they're going to go on the pad, are they? Or so uh, actually what we can do, we can leave the BBB room standing for now. If people want to join, you know, uh, they can do so. Uh, maybe Corwin will come back to close the room afterwards. But for now, you can stay in the room. And if people want to unmute themselves after we go off stream, that would be good. Uh, so we are about to go into the next talk in about 30 seconds. Let me just talk to production real quick. Uh, so uh, yes, we are going to go into the next talk pretty soon. You should still be able to hear me, I think. Nope. They cannot. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, David, I'll leave you in a room. Uh, we'll be in touch in a, within five minutes to see if people are not showing up. If... Thank you, Leo. Uh, yes. Sorry. I'm, I'm dealing with many things at the same time. So I'm going to stop the recording. No, I'm going to leave the recording on. Uh, is there anyone in a room that want to unmute? We are not on the stream anymore now. Does anyone want to say something or talk with David? Or do we want to close the room?
even if it's just by line. Okay, cool. So what are we going to do then? Uh, David, thank you so much for, for, the, for your time. Uh, we're actually going to close the room right now. I'm going to stop the recording.